Yo, 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 what is up, my fallopian tubers? Cesario from the barrio coming back at you with another video for your butt. And today, man, I'm gonna just do a reminiscent video, man, and go through my childhood binder. It's basically like one of the only binders I really had as a kid. Because I was a set collector and I kept my sets in boxes. But I have... This is the exact same binder that I had as a kid. Look at that. How old this is. Uh, it had all those dust bunnies and stuff down here too. And I remember I pulled it off. And then when I pulled it off, I stopped because it, it brought back a memory. Uh, I had this um, Filipino friend. And I went to his house. And, you know, he should have room with him and his sister. And it had an old TV, man. And we were watching and it was just dusty as hell. You could barely see the screen, right? So, I went up to it. And I wiped it. And I cleaned it. And they screamed like out of hell. Like, what? Oh my god. Oh. And I couldn't, I just could not see why. You know, I was like, I just cleaned the screen. Man, what's the big deal? But apparently that was like their ma, uh, grandma's. Uh, TV and she had already passed away like five years ago and They never wiped it clean after she passed away, you know, and then I don't know where I just come This damn Mexican comes out of the blue and wipes it clean uh, Man his parents never forgave me for that man So anyways Let's get back to where we're here check it out. So this is like from the boxes the bottom of the boxes so you'll see a lot of these like that I cut out myself usually from the bottom of the box but man look at all these box X back then so Daryl Strawberry was my number one guy for a long time when I first first got into like baseball like knowing and just whatever uh, I gotta say Don Manley was my number one guy until I read a piece of until I read an article about him and I just kinda dropped him from my number one guy to number three so this is my number two guy uh, Wade Boggs so you're talking about you know 88, 89 when I started putting these together um, check it out so, this Daryl Strawberry right here, man, I just made a mess. This was my first big purchase ever. I bought this like in, what, 90, I think? And it was $80, all right? And he, and normally I always put my cards, I never left spaces back then. I always put, you know, all the cards from here, Donruss, Fleer, Tops. You know, Donruss, I don't obviously don't have a Fleer, Tops. So that's what I would do. Alright. But if there's a thing you should notice, back then I did not have a single 84 Donruss. You got 83 Donruss, 83 Fleer, 83 Tops. Should be an 84 Donruss, but I got the 84 Fleers. You know, 84 tops to the 85s. But back then, I never, it seemed like it at least, that I never had seen an 84 Donruss. And that's what I tell people. is like, so that's why the 84 Donruss Don Madeline to me, check out, this is Purina catch out. So you see all these like these? These are box sets. All right. So, man, normally I would steal these boxes from KB or Kmart. And I would get all these box sets. And then I'd split them up, you know, to uh, fill up my binder. And then I would have to go steal another one because the set was not complete. Uh, so, look at the cards like this. You see those edges? Look how bad that edge is. Because I cut these myself as a kid. These were from the bottom of the boxes. You know? 
But check it out, man. The 88. So you got the regular, the all star, and the team leaders. And then you, you know, like I used to love this set right here, the all star set. Look at that. I always thought those were badass. Really thought that was like one of the coolest sets ever. You know, and I also love these big cards, but you can see the problem is they're too big. You know? And like these are all, you know, like I said, I used to go to KB stores and Kmart and take all these um box sets. So let me show you real quick what a box set is. Alright, so I just pulled out a quick few examples from my shelf. Like these, you know, they come in these little box sets. You know, that's a top stadium club. The Circle K one. You know? The Home Run Kings. You got Don Rist the Rookies. You know, so I could go to KB and find all these um, boxes. And this is um, something I had never seen before until I just purchased this. But this is a numbered box set. And I had no idea what these cards looked like till somebody posted it on um, the Facebook Google Baseball Card Junkies TV. And I asked, hey, is that that box set? And he's like, yeah. So at least now I know what it looks like. But yeah, so I would take, I would go and man, I would steal these boxes and then put them out. My take out the weight, take out all the stars and put them in my binders and then have to go get another one. Don't tell, don't tell nobody that. All right, so back to the binder. So see cards like this, like the bogs. These are like custom cards that they used to make back then. I mean, even back then, like in 88 and stuff, you know, you see these um, cards. They're just, they're not from any set. They're, they're unlicensed, but they still use the logos. Like, they didn't care. You know, they weren't going to get caught. They were small time guys, man, that you would see at the card shop box it. You know? Um, things like this. <sighs> man. You know? Box sets. And these big, um, big cards, you guys remember those? Same thing as the Bowman. They were just huge, but they were sweet cards, man. The backs were awesome. And then, like, cards like this were cards that came in baseball cards, you know, like the 59. They came in the baseball card magazines, and I would cut them out. So, <laughs> I just noticed how bad I was at cutting things out. Hey, but I did it with scissors. Most people buy the straight edge, straight edge now and, um, cut through it. But, you know, so you can see here's the 90s. I collected all through the... I, I, I was not a big fan of the 90 tops, man. When that came out, I, I, just, I just wasn't a big fan. I know a lot of people have said they love that set. And I just really didn't. But here are the coins and the collector books. And something that I always used to see as a, as a sin. Look at the Bowmans, man. When the Bowmans came out, they fixed the size, you know, by a couple years later after the first set. That was just too big. <laughs> Uh, but check that out. Who's that? Dude. Hall of Famer. No. Two Hall of Famers. Ciao. Harold Baines and Wade Boggs. But yeah, I stopped, uh, pretty much stopped buying cards about 94. Collecting in 92. But in 93, 94, I would buy the boxes just to put the sets together. So here we go. Mr. Don Manley. Donnie Baseball. I'm sorry I'm making this video long, but I just watched on Wildcat72's video. You know, I've been watching a lot of Mangini videos too. Um, and Wildcat72 thought he made like a 50-minute video, but it was only like 17 minutes because he missed out a big portion. But so as you can see, I th I never had the 84 Donruss. I swear I just never saw that card. I just started thinking that card was a myth that it was just made up. But so these were the rookies that I had. And then you go to 85, 86, you know, the Meanies, the Donruss. So you can check out like the 87 Donruss. And then this, these were a box set. So you can see they're low number because they were a box set. And look at and you could buy a box. You know, you buy those box sets and then have like, you know, sometimes two, five of your PC guys. And if you guys don't know, man, the 87 Fleer. Oh man, that's just like one of my favorite sets. Look at the look at the box sets. These are also box sets. Purina. I mean Purina. There you go, the Purina. Man, but baseball cards, collecting baseball cards back then was so freaking awesome. Look at that. From the score sets. KB. Back then, um, you know, thanks to Beckett, I discovered card shows you know 
So once I started going to card shows, that's when I buy these custom cards. This is like one of my favorite cards of all time. Of all time. Even though it's a counterfeit, whatever you want to call it. It's not official. You know, uh, no license. But back then, these guys were so small. No one's going to investigate them, you know. But one of the things I remember when I showed this card one time in a video showing off this binder. Someone said, hey, that's um, Wrigley Field behind them. Not Yankee. I was like, I know that. And one of the reasons I say I know that. I used to work at a place called Big League Dreams and we had replicas of like Yankee Stadium, you know, and Chicago. So we had actual flags like this way up in the air. Dude, and I used to, and the top flag was at 80 feet. And we would rent a boom that went up to 80 feet or whatever it was, probably over 100, man. It was just super high. And when you get up that high at the maximum that your boom goes, dude, your basket, your boom, your, you know, that you're in the air shakes dude the whole time it's never steel it's always waving up and down man oh man so of course i i always knew it's like yeah i know that's wrigley field because i remember this background specifically and changing those flags every every couple years they get old but here's another one of those cards you know the big cards the bowmans they get also too big look at that Another one of those box sets, I believe. These ones. Uh, so check it out, man. Box sets. <coughs> um, I don't know if I have my candy cane still. But trip out. Hey, check out this card. This is a '91 leaf, and a '92 leaf, I think. All right, but. I bought this card not that long ago, and I thought it was the coolest card. I was like, "Oh, I've never seen that card before! Wow, that's cool!" And then I, and then I saw my looked at my binder specifically to see my Don Mattingly PC, and I had it. I was like, "What? I remember? Don't remember it being so cool, but it's cooler to me than ever now." Uh, we got Wally Joiner, man, the Phenom. All right, that's what he was called back then. Uh, oh, I used to love this set. Another one of those box sets. So, these are all the guys that I used to PC, man. Alright? These were the guys that were hot in, you know, 89 and 1990. Alright? Um, so, check out this card right here. You'll hear me a lot of times when I get asked what's my favorite card of all time. I'll say this one. Because when this card came out, it literally was my favorite card of all time at the time i mean i went out and i bought a will clark jersey i had a san francisco giants uh starter jacket it was badass too but yeah i drew this picture right here i remember drawing this picture and i used to like to draw when i was a kid and but i remember he came out looking fat for whatever reason on my drawing but yeah man um see like cards like this this is cards that I would cut out from the bottom of the pack. The box. You know, I would get the box. Try try to buy the box from the person or wait to buy the last packs. And these were the bottom of the, of the boxes. Let me give you an example real quick. So back then when you would buy a box. The, you know, the, all the boxes at the store. These are how the bottom looked. So I would always try to... Uh, they would always give it to you if you bought the last pack. So if you bought the last pack that was available, you know, you get the box. So sometimes if I only had enough to buy like two packs and there was like five packs left, man, I would wait around. I would wait around for hours till somebody bought a couple of packs and hope they weren't buying other packs so I can get the box if I bought the last pack. All right, man. So here's my Tony Gwynn that I used to PC back then. But as you can see... I think somebody, somewhere along the line, stole my Gwyn Rookies. But yeah, man. Collecting during this time, same thing right here from the bottom of a box. Alright, these I cut them out myself from the bottom of a box when I was a kid. But it was a glorious time. Let me show you what it would look like if I wanted to go to a card show. In my days. How I would find them.
All right, so we're going to look at a Beckett from June 1991. Yes, this is the error Mickey Mantle uh, Beckett. But let's say around my birthday, because this is from June. My birthday is June 21st. So say June 21st, man, I got $5 from my grandma, you know, $10 from my uncle, and another 5 bucks from somebody else. And I got 20 bucks, man. I'm fucking living life. Sorry for cussing. But my birthday is June 21st, so I'm going to look for a show, okay? This is the calendar, okay, of June. All right, so look at California. Dude, there were so many card shows to go to. But let's say I want to go right after my birthday when I got uh, my money. So look at all these card shows I could go to. Montebello. All right, that's by me. Uh, Whittier, California. You know, where they filmed... Um, Back to the Future, the Planet Hills Mall, where they filmed Back to the Future. I could go to all these card shows, man. Um, and it was awesome. You just, I just can't explain how easy it was to card sh go to card shows every weekend. You know what I mean? It was just so easy. You know, Kevin Mitchell, man. I always wondered if he did steroids for, you know, one or two years and then Kate fell off the mat. But my... I just noticed that um, my Kevin Mitchell rookies are gone because his rookies were 86. The 86 Fleer especially. But back then, man, I could take the bus everywhere, you know. Uh, the 486 used to take me to the Pony Hills Mall. Uh, here's my Kirby Puckets. And I think someone stole my 85 Tops Kirby Puckett a long time ago. And no big deal. Um, but then I, if there was a show at the West Covina Mall... I could take the 488. And if there was a show at the Eastland Mall. And I love these cards. I could take the 490. Like I already knew all these bus routes man. Every card show. Someone took my 85 tops. Rookie Eric Davis. I had these cards in storage. For like 8 years I believe. <laughs> they sat in a public storage. For like 8 years man. Uh, you know these cards right here. Same thing. I actually cut those out myself on the bottom of boxes back in the days. So like things like this. I also cut these out from the baseball card magazines. You know. I think I mentioned that earlier. This is a 69 throwback. And the best pitcher in 88 for a couple months undoubtedly was Oro Hershiser. His 85 um, tops is gone. Um... Yeah, same thing. Cut these out from a magazine. Both of these are cut out from magazines as a kid. But that was it, man. This is my PC childhood folder. And when I got back into the hobby, um, I think a lot of people were asking me if I was going to keep going where I left off. You know what I mean? But I've decided... I, You know, I decided way back then. Like, no, I'm going to leave this as is. I'm not going to... Man, look at that. Look how bad these pages are. They just... They don't, they don't even... Um, they're all ripped. These are old. Um, but... I was like, I'm going to leave it as it is, man. This is history. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to start adding... You know, I'm not going to keep going on this Daryl Strawberry PC. You know, I'm not going to keep going on the Manly... Which I do have over right here is uh, my box. And I do have more Manly's. Like I just started collecting Manly again. But I would never put them in this box with my old Manly's. I'm going to just keep this as is. I already feel bad for taking out the dust bunnies over here. Alright but here's my long video man. Long videos are in right now. I think. <laughs> uh, one of the best advice I ever got. When I had like under 100 subs or 200 subs. Rico Russo told me. Keep them under five minutes, man. Keep them under five minutes. And that was my goal when I first started. Keep them under five minutes. Now that I think I'm OG, I can make longer videos. I don't know. Does that logic sound right? No other card, man, in my collection brought me more joy and happiness than when I found and bought this $84 down manly, man. I just got to be the honest truth. Even my 53 Mano, man, as much as I love that card, this card was the dream card what some people call a white whale which is incorrect but this was my white whale all right so trying to keep it at 20 minutes love the hobby people keep collecting baseball cards forever essay ciao